If you've ever read a periodic table, are an avid gardener, or a huge fan of the direct-to-video sequel to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, you've heard of potassium. But what you may not know is, by itself, it looks like metallic butter. And I know, you're probably thinking one of two things. Oh man, metallic butter, I've always wondered what robot toast tastes like. I'm sure it's delicious. Or, geez, that stuff is in our food and what we use to grow food? That can't be good. Well, both of those things are wrong, but it's okay, because we're about to go over everything you need to know about potassium. All right, let's science. Potassium can actually be really nasty stuff on its own. It reacts violently when in contact with oxygen, and it reacts even more violently when in contact with water. And by reacts violently, what I mean is it explodes violently, almost immediately. It hates everything we love, but we still love it, mainly because we need it in very, very small doses. The first thing you need to know about potassium is it's an element. No, not that kind of element, a chemical element, which means it is a substance that cannot be broken down through chemical means. That block of potassium is just a bunch of the same atom. The name potassium comes from the word potash, which refers to a type of potassium rich fertilizer farmers used to make out of pot ash. Get it? Pot ash? Potash? I didn't even write that joke. History did. History, you crazy. Can we get history a writing credit on this? No. Potassium is also referred to as kalium, which was taken from the word alkali, which means soda ashes in Latin. That derived from alkali, which is Arabic for plant ashes. Are you starting to see a repeating theme here? Remember how potassium is represented with a K on the periodic table? That's because of its other name, kalium. Potassium Potassium is considered an alkali metal, which is a group of silvery, shiny metals that are quite soft. But don't let them hear you call them soft because they are extremely reactive. And potassium is no exception. Potassium has one more electron than its elemental neighbor argon, which is extremely stable. Since potassium wants to be as stable as argon, it is trying its darndest to rid itself of its extra electron or valence electron, and it will do so by any means necessary. The way potassium violently rids itself of its extra electron has made it infamous in the world of chemistry. Some chemists have gone so far as to describe it as an evil element. Although we wouldn't say that, that's some other chemist, somewhere not at Flint Scientific. But those judgmental chemists don't say that about any other element from the entire periodic table. And it has radioactive elements on it. That should say something. To truly understand the reactiveness of potassium, let's see what happens when it's thrown into some water. Remember when I said potassium was extremely reactive? What I meant was everything you just saw. So let's get back to why that reaction, particularly with water, is so explosive. Since water is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, the potassium atoms combine with the hydrogen and oxygen atoms in the water to create potassium hydroxide. Since there aren't enough oxygen and potassium atoms to combine with every available hydrogen atom, the excess hydrogen is released into the air. And because this reaction is exothermic, which means it releases heat, and hydrogen is very flammable, the excess hydrogen ignites. <laughs> Potassium's reaction with oxygen alone is gradual when it's in its solid form, but if it's melted down, the reaction becomes more rapid, creating potassium peroxide. You may all notice that these reactions leave behind the same violet color. That's because potassium's calling card, if you will, is a signature purple flame. Other elements have their own signature flames as well. If you saw our Hungry Dragon episode, then you may remember some of the color signatures of different elements. And if you didn't see the Hungry Dragon experiment, shame on you, stop this video and go watch it right now, and then come back. Remember how I said that all all the alkali metals are very reactive? Imagine what would happen if we combine two of them together. Sodium, Na, can be combined with potassium K to create a sodium-potassium alloy called NaK. Chemists pronounce this NAC because of the abbreviations of these two elements, Na for sodium and K for potassium, like the Three Stooges. Yuck, 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 yuck. This combination is so reactive that if dropped, it will catch fire before it hits the ground because it's reacting with the molecules of water in the air. NAC is often used to transfer heat in nuclear reactors. Yes, you heard that correctly. Nuclear reactors. Given the explosive behavior of potassium, it needs to be stored in oil or kerosene because of its rapid oxidation. All of this to say don't play with straight up potassium at home, kids, and definitely don't spread it on your toast because it will most likely react with the oxygen in the toast. Then you'll have burnt toast and it burnt you. Speaking of you, 
You have potassium in your body. Don't panic though. It's not going to violently react with the water that makes up two thirds of your body, causing you to explode. That's because the potassium atoms in your body are ions. An ion is an atom that has lost or gained an electron. In potassium's case, the atom has lost its valence electron. Now there are fewer electrons orbiting the nucleus than there are protons inside, making the atom positively charged. Potassium has several positive effects on your body. You like that one? Positive effects, electrons? Okay, I'll show myself to the door. Potassium is essential to a wide range of biological processes, such as lowering your blood sugar, lowering your cholesterol, regulating your heartbeat, working with sodium in your body to regulate your blood pressure, among many other processes. I could keep going, but simply put, it's potassium's job to lower your blood pressure while sodium raises it. These two elements have a symbiotic relationship in your bloodstream, regulating the fluids and nutrients coming in and out of cell membranes. This explains the drastic difference in opinion of potassium between biologists and chemists. Biologists want as much as they can get their hands on. Chemists don't want it in their hands at all. That joke's just for you. In potassium's case, you can definitely have too much or too little of a good thing. Too much potassium can cause low blood pressure and can also be a side effect of kidney failure, since your kidneys are designed to filter and excrete excess potassium in your urine. If your body has too much potassium, it makes it challenging for your cells and nerves to get the proper nutrients and fluids that they need to function, resulting in paralysis, toxicity, even heart failure. I can't help but feel like potassium is trying to kill me no matter what I do. Am I paranoid? Don't answer that. Don't worry if you don't think you're getting enough potassium because it exists in a lot of the foods you may eat every day. Potatoes, beans, yogurt, bananas, whole grains and broccoli are all rich in potassium. So if you feel like you're not getting enough in your diet, just whip up a batch of my famous Bradley bean potato yogurt banana broccoli casserole. It's potassilicious. Recipe in the description. Please note I have never tried it and it's only famous in the same way a gallon of milk challenge or cinnamon challenge are famous. Potassium has other uses besides making big explosions, making your muscles move and creating disgusting casseroles. Back when it was discovered by Humphrey Davy. <laughs> I bet that guy looked like an egg or something. Hey. Oh, no, he looks pretty normal, actually. So in 1807, when he looked pretty normal, farmers would burn dead vegetation to create potassium-rich fertilizer, or potash. Remember potash? Potash isn't pure potassium. Davy developed a method to isolate the potassium atoms through electrolysis, a process that creates chemical decomposition by passing electric current through a solution containing ions. Besides fertilizers, Potassium can be found in types of salts, soaps, and glass. And if you happen to be out in the middle of the woods and want to feel that sweet, sweet potassium in your hands, just reach down and grab a handful of dirt because 2.1% of Earth's crust is potassium, making potassium the eighth most abundant element on Earth. Did you like this video? Of course you did, or else you wouldn't be watching right now. Let's make a deal. I won't ask you to contribute to my Patreon if you hit that like and subscribe button. Have a... Have a science-rific day. Have a scientific-rific day. Okay, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs>